Hello again, modelers. Trekworks back with you. Uh, just out in the shop chilling, uh, doing a little bit of work. And uh, we're getting ready to do our Enterprise B prep work before we paint this. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is um, I'm going to be coming in and using this product right here called Plastic. A lot of you guys have been asking about this. Uh, you buy this at like an automotive paint supply store uh, is the best place I could tell you to find it. You can obviously order it online, but uh, that's where I buy this stuff. And uh, what this is, is it's an adhesion promoter, and it's made to bond plastic and paint when, uh, when you're starting off with bare plastic. It's used in the automotive field for painting a lot of plastic parts on cars, and it works great on these models. Uh, what it does is you lay this down first before you even spray your primer, and you get a, 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 a nice finish on here, which makes your paint bond to this. So if you've got to come back and do tape work or anything like that, and you're going to be painting multiple colors, uh, it allows you to... Pull your tape off with confidence knowing that your base coat down here is going to stay. You're not going to be pulling up chunks of paint every time you pull a little tape off of it. So uh, not much of it is required. Uh, this particular stuff, there's another product out there called uh, Bulldog, which is uh, similar, but um, it leaves a little bit of a texture when you spray it. This stuff dries absolutely smooth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to uh, apply a light coat of this on all these parts and dry it with my heat gun here, and then uh, we'll be ready to do our priming after that. So... Here we go. Kick on our ventilation here. And start doing these parts. It's going to get a little noisy. Apologize for the noise. This just has just a slight amount of coloring to it, just so you can tell that you're covering your area with it. Go ahead and dry these. This stuff dries really, really fast, and it just requires a really nice, even, light coat. Okay, so there we can see we have uh, one light coat on here. It, it dries almost looking like a satin clear finish, like a dull clear. But you can see there's no texture of any kind on there. It's laid down on these, on these parts nice and smooth. And uh, again, it'll give us a really nice solid base to apply our primer. I'm going to go ahead and flip these parts over now and do the reverse sides. This part I won't need to do that, but I want to make sure I get on the sides of this lower hole section here. The heat gun setting, if you can see this here, is at, it's at 200, but it's actually a little less than that. It's right around 190, something like that. And I'm not holding it in one place very long, so you don't have to worry about melting the plastic or catching your paint on fire or anything like that. Just a really low heat setting is all that's needed for this. So that's already dry. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't, it's not tacky or sticky or anything. Uh, it's nice and uniform on these parts. So we're ready now to move on to the primer stage. We'll do that now. And start off just by uh, doing the top of the sauce. And 
again to force dry this. This force drying, I really, really like to do it because it, uh, I've explained this several times, but uh, the faster you dry this paint, the less chance you have of any debris sticking to it. Uh, and if it does, it'll just stick very lightly on the surface and with a light sanding or scuffing, it'll come right off. It won't be deeply embedded into the paint. And uh, obviously uh, saves a lot of time in the building process as well, since this part literally when I'm done with this gun will be dry to the touch and be able to be handled without worrying about any kind of smudges on your paint or anything like that. And you can really see it brought a lot of detail to life. Okay, flip this part over. And the back side. putty work that we did uh, previously here it really um, helped to uh, cover up our a lot of our seams and imperfections that were on the model Yeah, I was going to point out too that I just uh, I just finished washing these parts with soap and water. I can see a couple little tiny spots where this tiny little bubbles appeared when we did this, and that was from uh, uh, some moisture that was still there. That's not. We'll just level these out here. Just run your finger over, and again, this is already pretty much dry to the touch. It's not tacky at all. Now I'm going to turn it around and make sure I get the edges of it real well. cover still. Okay, here this part looks great. Uh, as you can see, it's been fully covered with primer now. It's nice and slick and clean. No debris in it at all. Really nice and clean. It's just uh, ready to go. For our, uh, we'll, what we'll be doing next with this is we'll sand this down with 600 grit sandpaper, and then I'll apply my first coat of base color, which will be an off-white, and then I'll sand that all out with 600, apply one more base coat of white, and then I'll start coming back and doing all my tape work here, doing all my paint detail with the airbrush. So, uh, again, just when you go to that first stage of paint, you can really see that you start bringing out all the details in this model, and there's quite a bit there. It's really nice looking. Let's go ahead and get this lower saucer section, or secondary hull section covered up. Turn 
this around now and uh, work this other side. Looks like our seams here, are all these assembly joints filled in really nice for us. Uh, they're very barely noticeable, and they'll disappear even more as we go to uh, more sanding and uh, more coats of uh, base coat. I'm going to flip this up on the side here now and uh, just do these little top edges, and we should be done with this part. And real thin coats are all that's required there. No, I'm getting a little bit of a, a little bit of moisture was on there. Just a couple tiny little water bubbles are popping up on that. So yeah, just make sure your parts are really nice and dry before you start on this. I got in just a little bit too much of a hurry on this. This is uh, there's just kind of a little bit of rough texture going on right there. If that'll sand right out with some 600. This is a uh, this particular primer is. Um, called a high build primer so it's made to be sanded quite a bit of sanding it'll instantly turn to powder when you see if, if you have a primer that you're sanding on and you don't get a lot of powder off of it it's not very a, it's not really a good high quality uh, primer if you're not seeing a lot of powder when you sand uh, I, I notice that there's some types of primer out there that when they dry they're kind of almost semi glossy looking and they don't sand out very well you tend to kind of chunk on the edges of it when you sand they don't feather edge really well so but this is a good quality uh, made by Transtar uh, it's a good quality high build primer so it's uh, it'll help you fill in some of the imperfections and it sands out really nice when it's fully cured so all this little rough stuff that got on there that'll sand right out and uh, that's looking pretty good so let's do this final piece here but you'll have a bond on here with this plastic uh, adhesion promoter that will really make it a nice stable platform to work with when you do the rest of your painting, especially all that detail painting out, uh, it'll really help you from lifting that paint off of there. Make sure we get this last edge here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the two products that we used here were Transtar high build gray primer and plastic A2330S is the part number on this uh, and as, again both of these products are available at an auto paint supply store uh, they work great for modeling products now uh, this can's going to be a little north of twenty dollars and it sounds like a lot but just to give you an example I'm just using this new can here so it looks good on film but this is my original can that I've had for probably three years there's probably been um, upwards of a hundred models that have been made out of this uh, so that's how long you can you, you just be, being that you need just small light coats of this stuff uh, you get quite a bit of use out of it as long as you don't let it get super cold or super hot it stays in the can uh, shelf life is pretty long on this stuff so initial investment of twenty dollars you'll have it around for a really long time and the can of primer depending on how thick you go with your primer you can expect to get quite a bit out of that can there as well uh, quite a few models out of that one can so um, and uh, I think you'll find that this primer will run a little bit less than what you pay for Hobby Shop primer. Just because it's Hobby Shop, they usually mark it up a little bit, but uh, this is out there. So anyway, just a, a little painting tip there for you and a little product tip. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, 
Hope this helps you out when you go to start building your own models. And until we see you for the next video, everybody, happy modeling.